Great, thank you, Gully, and uh, thank you for the organizers for inviting me today to talk about React Home. Um, so the strong motivation for using pathway databases and analysis, I just want to just put up the slide just to go through some of these. Biological pathways are very intuitive to researchers. It's a wonderful display of biological information. Uh, you can visualize multiple different data types within the context of a pathway. It's one of the few platforms that supports genomics, proteomic, and metabolomic research. Um, and then there's computational methods that can help to automate the analysis. But pathway databases really come into the fruition where they satisfy some of the common use cases in biological research. They're found wonderful ways to identify hidden or emerging patterns hidden within gene lists. Um, they help us to ex help us to describe and understand the experimental observations that we make in the laboratory. Um, they're very useful in uh, predicting the function of uncharacterized genes. Um, they provide a great free framework for quantitative modeling or computational uh, modeling and uh, very useful in assisting with the development of molecular or prognostic signatures in the clinical lab. So Reactome started off over a decade ago in 2001 as the genome knowledge base. Uh, we initially were trying to capture and standardize a language to describe uh, molecular processes. Unfortunately, we realized we were actually capturing reactions and pathways. And uh, in 2004, we rebranded as Reactome. So what is Reactome? Well, we're an open source, open access pathway database. We have about over 1,400 human pathways encompassing many areas of biology. Um, these pathway modules are expert authored, manually curated, and peer reviewed. I'll talk more about this process in a moment. And every, what the important point to make is that every pathway that we describe is traceable back to the primary literature. Um, and we extensively cross-reference our own internal data to external bioinformatic resources to enrich our own annotations. Um, we do computationally infer uh, pathways for 20 model organisms. We're using the human data set, pathway data set, as from which we project into these model organisms. And we essentially are providing tools and data sets for browsing and visualizing and integrating pathway data. So the unit of Reactome um, is the reaction itself. We like to think of ourselves as a reaction network database, very much like Panther, KEG, BioSeq. Um, what it means is that we can explicitly describe biological processes as biochemical reactions and events, and we can represent many of these, the events and states that you currently find in biology. Um, so up until about uh, two years ago, traditionally when we were curating uh, molecules involved in these reactions, we were primarily describing proteins, macromolecular complexes, and uh, small molecules. But as our molecular understanding of disease has increased, we recognized that we needed to expand our data model to capture information about non-coding RNAs, disease variants, and therapeutics. And you can see in brackets a lot of the reference databases that we're using to cite this information when we curate um, the reactions and pathways. And we're also using gene ontology terms wherever to describe uh, regulatory events, molecular function, and where these uh, reactions are participating within the cell. So we can describe many different types of reactions, things like met metabolism, um, dimerization, and reactions associated with signaling, such as phosphorylation. And basically, these reactions become like building blocks uh, to create uh, causal events or chains of causal events that we describe as pathways. And Reactum currently has a strong uh, emphasis on signal transduction and other biological processes, and we capture some areas of metabolism. So in this slide, I'm just showing you an overview of our curation software pipeline. Um, I want to just point out on the left here, we do have a, an ability to import, a, import um, pathway information and other curation, curated data from a variety of other sources using open, open and closed uh, data sets, uh, sorry, open data standards and closed data sets. Um, and this data flows into the curator tool. But traditionally in manual curation, our authors, our expert authors, you can use uh, an author tool, the data flows to the curator, the curator tool then feeds it, the, cura the, the curator uses the curator tool, and that data feeds into the development database. And every uh, quarter, we take a slice of that data, 
and that information flows into the release candidate database where we have a variety of different, we, in, we add additional external annotations, we do some software checks, and we do some data expansion to project uh, the human pathways into model organisms. That data gets funneled to a live database and variety of different scripts, uh, populates web pages, uh, and we have a development website where the reviewer, part of the, the curation process, can view the information, feedback that information to the curator, and then when everything's ready for release, we just flip a switch and the data moves from the development site onto the live Reactum website. So I just want to take the next few minutes to talk about the, the personnel that are involved in our curation process. So I mentioned that Reactome is an expert authored uh, pathway database. So we, initially we start by recruiting bench scientists who are expert in a particular field. In some cases, the curator's expertise can be used to create these projects. Um, the, the expert is there to basically provide certain information on a biological system, the pathway, or a series of reactions, and the, or to comment on the prepared outlines that have been made by the curator. And the details can come to us in a variety of different ways. They can be pen and paper or a spreadsheet. But what's most important about the expert is to basically define the boundaries of that pathway. All of the molecules um, must, oops, sorry. All the molecules in the pathway should be identified, and all of the assertions should be backed up with the literature. The curator's role, and we have a staff of 12 at Reactum, is to liaise with the expert and to take that detailed information and enter it into the database such that it's in a compu uh, computable, readable format and a human readable format. So their job is to make sure that the data going in fits the data schema, and really they are the link between the biological data and the database. And, and finally, and I'll talk about this in a moment, uh, their role is to then recruit the reviewer who's gonna look over that data. So the curator uses the curator tool. Um, this is a Java application using a Java API to connect directly with the database. Uh, the screenshot that I'm showing you here is showing you the graphical editor. Um, so one of the other tasks the curator has to do during the curation process is actually physically la manually lay out a pathway diagram. So we're using the systems biology graphical notation. This is a standard for representing um, pathways and networks. So uh, every entity within the diagram there has a particular shape and cellular compartment. So proteins are the green rectangles, uh, green ovals are small molecules, and macromolecular complexes are represented by blue rectangles. And the lines that are connecting these different nodes are involved, are the actual reactions themselves. So there is also a property editor which basically allows the curator to input specific information into particular fields in the database, allowing them to annotate proteins, add literature references, and make direct linkages to, to this graphical representation. Typically, the information that they're looking to capture in a normal reaction is as follows. Um, we'd like to describe the event as a with a name. Um, species is important. I'll talk to you a bit more about the fact that not all reactions that we curate in Reactome are derived from uh, humans. Uh, we like to describe compartments. We're using the gene ontology terms to describe that location. The inputs and outputs of the reaction using, in this case for proteins, Uniprot uh, as a reference, uh, in, uh, reference database. Uh, if the catalyst is known, we describe it. And then if there's a catalytic activity associated with the molecular function, then we, should, we add that information as well. There's always a literature citation. Most of the time it's PubMed. A few metabolic reactions cite some of the well-established textbooks just simply because the accessibility of the metabolic reactions in the databases, things that have been you know, characterized 60 years ago are rather difficult to access online. And then finally, there's a brief summation about the reaction itself. And in the top right corner, you see that there's a graphic representing this reaction as well. So evidence tracking is very important. Our preference is for direct evidence from human experiments. Um, however, often the evidence is, is from another species due to the lack of experimental information from the human system. Um, and in these cases, what we do is we manually curate um, a model organism reaction. So in this example, um, the, the orange arrows are representing human pathways based on direct evidence from the literature. And the green arrows are representing uh, 
reactions derived from model organism information. And so we create a parallel, excuse me, we create a parallel reaction uh, in the non-human species, and then we link that to the human reaction. So the final step of our curation workflow is the, is the reviewer's role. Um, they are, again, another expert in the field of, of the, the pathway that's being curated. Their job really is to correct the biological, their job is to check the biological correctness of the pathway, um, the providing comments to the curator, and the curator, again, is involved in this process. And when they liaise between the two experts to complete the project and prepare the curated reaction and pathway for release. So release, as I said, occurs every quarter. And as of version 45, um, we have annotations for uh, almost 7,200 human proteins. Uh, we count isoforms separately, um, and that translates to about uh, almost 6,500 reactions and over just over 1,400 pathways. Um, the other thing to point out here is we have over 14,500 literature references. And so one thing I would actually say to this, this audience is that this is actually quite a useful training data set here. We have protein information, we have a lot of annotations, and we have literature citations to back up that information as well. So all of this information um, is collectively organized into our, presented to the user as a pathway browser. This is fundamentally our single most important tool on the Reactome website. This is how our user community engages with Reactome, um, essentially viewing or treating Reactome as an online encyclopedia of pathways and biological knowledge. So on the, on the left-hand side, I think uh, it's maybe not too clear to you, there's a hierarchy which is listing all the pathways that are known to Reactome. And as a user clicks on a particular pathway or reaction on the hierarchy, the pathway panel on the right there updates with uh, the, the, the graphical representation of the pathway. Um, it's a, got a Google Map style panel, which means you can zoom in, navigate around, and you can overlay um, either interaction data on top of these diagrams or expression data, in a sense, colorizing pathway diagrams with biological data. And as you click on an entity, whether it's a protein, a small molecule, or if you click on a reaction, the details panel that you see below the pathway panel updates with additional information depending on the selected entity. Now, as reaction, reactome, Sorry, I sometimes get confused with saying things like reaction and reactome. I can't really say reaction now without saying reactome, and sometimes I say reaction and I mean reactome. But uh, reactome is now um, building out a disease portal and uh, curating cancer-specific and abnormal meta metabolic pathways. And um, essentially, we're on schedule for creating over 5,000 uh, additional proteins relevant to health and disease by the end of the grant period. Um, and to supplement this with uh, additional, um, supplement this with other functional entities, including non-coding RNAs, regulatory lipids, and uh, functionally significant protein isoforms. Um, so, disease curation isn't necessarily new to Reactome. We've previously curated processes involving uh, infection. Um, but now we can actually describe with changes to our data model, you know, changes where a normal protein, sorry, the normal protein is changed and this changes the function of a protein, um, a germline or a somatic mutation which changes the function of a protein, and the mode of action of the anti-cancer therapeutics such as vaccines uh, and uh, anti-cancer drugs. Um, so on the left here we have the, the, the pathway hierarchy and you can see a list of infectious diseases, uh, abnormal metabolic pathways, and our signaling uh, events associated with cancer. One of the challenges that we actually are facing just now is um, being able to visualize disease pathways, um, providing the user with an opportunity to view a disease event, series of disease events side by side with the wild type uh, diagram. So at the top, we're seeing a snapshot of the a couple of reactions that are associated with EGFR signaling. And in the panel below, um, we're showing um, that same wild type events grayed out in the background. And now in the foreground, you see a series of disease entities and disease events. These are highlighted in yellow, sorry, and highlighted in red, sorry. And um, this is something that we're working ongoing 
uh, working to actually make this the tool much more dynamic and interactive for the user community. Um, but as one other challenge that's faced as we're curating these disease-associated pathways is that we should annotate the disease proteins and their functions in a way that the variants, proteins, and the processes are integrated seamlessly with the rest of Reactome. And so the example that I've got here is if you were to look at the signaling by EGFR in, ca in cancer pathway, there's a particular EGFR mutant. And you can click on that mutant, and within the details panel, you're displayed additional information about that mutation. And what we'd like to be able to do is describe a series of other diseases where that mutation has been identified. So in this case, the example, we have uh, um, the EGFR mutant is also found in adult glioblastoma multiforme. So the user can be able to click that link and then be seamlessly taken to another page where they can see this disease and they can see a whole list of other additional variants associated with that disease. So efforts are underway to create a kind of disease ontology and this would be very beneficial, I think, to react to, not just as a controlled vocabulary, but also to improve our own annotation consistency uh, and to provide a framework then for data integration and ultimately efficient and effective data analysis. So um, I might be running a little bit ahead of schedule here, but um, our, the question that I was thinking about is pathway curation amenable to text mining? And forgive me, I'm not a text miner. I have used text mining in the past uh, when I was at uh, the Bind database. We, did, we had a system called Prebind. So I, I have used similar systems, but that's been some years ago. So I was thinking about it from pathway point of view, and I think the answer is yes. And, and there are a number of statements that we typically are searching for within the experimental results of papers that are somewhat formulaic. And I think key statements involved in a lot of the reactions that we're trying to create, so things like molecular interactions, enzymatic, enzymatic assays, or receptor binding, um, tend to be repeated. So I think there's opportunities for us to explore using uh, text mining tools. Um, but I, th I think I can break it down into three possible uses for text mining for React, or three use cases. So one, the first one is triaging documents. Our curators spend a tremendous amount of time trying to identify and then read papers. And they read, 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 and read. And then they synthesize. Now, synthesizing knowledge is important. But I think that takes a smaller amount of time than actually identifying the relevant knowledge. So we could definitely use text mining to extract uh, the functions of previously characterized proteins um, to help us to identify enzymatic and signaling events. Um, I think quite possibly because we do develop, uh, we do curate a lot of molecular interaction data. I think it's useful there. Um, helpful to identify post-translational modifications. And as we're curating disease processes, actually identifying the mutations that affect normal uh, function of proteins is very important. Um, and I'll use this next slide as an example. So what we're describing here is um, a disease reaction. So normally, SMAD4 binds to phosphorylated SMAD2 and SMAD3. So typically, when we curate the normal reaction, that would be like one paper, maybe two papers that we're citing. Now, in this particular example, there are 11 characterized SMAD4 mutations based on functional and structural studies. So when you do an initial PubMed search for this single reaction or information pertaining to the single reaction, you actually identify 504 PubMed citations, which sounds like a crazy number. And then the curator actually, in order to, to, to pull this information all together, assessed 29 of those abstracts and then ended up citing nine papers, which actually is nine, well, eight more than they would normally cite for this particular reaction. So I think text mining could actually be very valuable in triaging documents relevant to disease reaction curation. So and finally, I mean, what, what kind of tools can we use? Um, so when I was looking into this, um, one of the tools that came out was Textpresso. Um, it's a great way to mark up full text papers. Uh, with terms and phrases, and then to index that markup for searching. 
Another tool which is quite interesting because uh, some of the data at least we provide at React Home could be compatible with this system is Path Text, which is uh, developed by NACTEM in Manchester and where they're actually enriching models. They're using the system's biology markup language uh, as a kind of training set to uh, provide a framework for text mining. And React Home actually, in the next slide, I'll talk a bit more about this, provides data in this format. So it's, op it's uh, easily accessible. But there could be other approaches. I mean, uh, Sci Knowledge Mine could well be an, an, a great opportunity actually for us as well. And I suppose this meeting is providing the opportunity to discuss these things. Um, the second point I want to make is I think um, Reaction provides a lot of open access, open source data in a variety of different formats, uh, database files, some of the open data standards like SPML and Biopacks. Um, and maybe one thing we, because I've talked about this before, we have such a lot of annotated uh, proteins and small molecules and we're linking that to pathways and we have literature citations. This could form a great training data set for text mining. And then one final thing to think about, uh, since visual, data visualization is so important to react to them, could we think about ways to visualize the results of text mining in the context of react to them? So this is our new pathway browser that we should be releasing in about uh, a month's time. And what I want to just illustrate with the top panel on the right is this is the interaction overlay. And we're actually bringing in interaction data in from Intact in real time using the Sidekick web service. And then below, in the panel below that, we're bringing, uh, we have this new tabbed details panel. And essentially, we're bringing in expression data uh, from Expression Atlas. And again, we're using a RESTful API there, and bringing that information in real time. So theoretically, we could create another tab to display other types of knowledge within the context of our pathway diagrams. So that's just another thought to put out there. So um, just to finish up, um, I think the current challenges and probably the future were for Reactum. I think it would be interesting to integrate text mining methods to support our manual curation, not just as a triaging tool, but for other possibilities beyond that. I think using Reactum curated data to support text mining as a training data set would be actually a valuable exercise. Um, and then, as I said, developing tools to kind of display text mining data in Reactum could actually be kind of useful. Um, and then from a biocuration point of view, I mean, this definitely, you know, this is, would definitely help us with increasing our numbers of curated proteins and other functional entities. It'll supplement our normal pathways with variant reactions representing disease. Um, it'll help us to support the continued work to work with the, the biocuration community to improve um, ontology support, developing open data standards. And from a point of view of our own website, help us to enhance and improve our tools. So uh, I just want to thank all of the members of the Reactum group at EBI, at uh, New York University Medical Center, and at OICR. Um, so there's curators, developers, and of course my boss, Lincoln Stein. And unfortunately, I do want to make a shameless plug at the end here for a Biocuration 2014 meeting, which I'm organizing in Toronto next year. Um, and Cecilia has agreed to participate and organize a bio. Uh, a biocreative workshop. So thank you, and uh, I'll take questions. Okay, so a quick question. Uh, you mentioned that uh, the focus now is uh, on disease pathways uh, related to diseases, and you're going to develop a disease ontology. Is this a community, a wide community effort? Because there are already some ontologies out there, which right. I know are not good. But so I might have misspoken, but Reactum will, um, would like to support disease ontology development, but I don't think we will actively be curating. Like we will, we will provide data like we do to gene ontology and pro, uh, the protein ontology. Okay. Um, but um, I think there are other efforts, better efforts out there to develop disease ontologies. Okay, so, so we'll just use that. Have Have you contacted some group already, or I? Sorry, maybe this is sidetrack and we don't want no, to... No, 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 so it's a good point to raise, actually. Um, I, I can't, fortunately, I'm speaking on behalf of um, Reactome and I don't have all the information. So, I mean, if Peter Destaccio, our editor-in-chief, I can here, ask Peter. It'd yeah. actually be worth actually discussing that with him. Sorry. Okay. Yes, Harold. 
Yeah. <laughs> One, maybe two questions. Um, sure. So I'm, I'm just interested, when you need to define a pathway using PubMed IDs for, uh, as evidence for dif from different species, mm -hmm. um, how do you know which, uh, I guess, what species is valid in that particular pathway when you're describing it for humans? So, so how far do you go? Like, would you use yeast data, or would you use, do you stop at some level? Oh, right. So we typically stop at um, the point of eukaryotic. I mean, yes, we would use eukaryotic organisms, preferably the higher class. Yeah. But so, there are, there's definitely things in, in notch signaling that are relevant in fly and worms that are felt relevant to um, Right. Annotating so, human reactions. So, so I guess you, you, you must have then a preconceived notion of the steps of the pathway and you know when one is missing. Yes, we typically have a review path. We have, again, this comes down to the, the, the author's involvement, the expert's involvement. They, they define elements of the pathway and they'll help us with some of the literature. And also, you know, if, it, if that's not clear, then the curator will be part of the review process. We'll kind of focus on review articles to get the right type of information. Okay, great. <laughs>